in this video we are going to discuss about python program to check whether a number is perfect number or not first let's see what is a perfect number 6 is a perfect number why because the factors for 6 are 1 2 3 6 we should not consider that number if we add 1 2 3 if we add 1 2 3 the result is 6. 6 is nothing but the given number. So perfect number means the sum of factors of a number is equal to the given number. Okay. So the factors for 6 are 1, 2, 3, 6. But we should not consider 6. We should not consider that number. So if we add the factors, what is the result? 6. So 6 is nothing but given number. So that's why we can say that 6 is a perfect number. So perfect number means the sum of factors of a number is equal to the given number. Okay. Excluding that number. Here while adding the factors, we should not consider that 6. So likewise, 28 is also perfect number. The factors for 28 are 1, 2, 4, 7, 14, 28. So 1, 2, 4, 7, 14, 28. So these are the factors of 28. But we should not consider that number. So if we add 1, 2, 4, 7, 14, 2 plus 1 means 3, 3 plus 4 means 7, 7 plus 7 means 14, so 14 plus 14 means 28. So 28 is nothing but the given number. So that's why we can say that 28 is a perfect number. Now let us see the program here. n is equal to int of input of entire number. So by using input function, uh, we can read some data from the keyboard. But the problem with input function is, it will return uh, input as a string. But here we want to perform operations on the numbers. So that's why we have to use int function. So that the string will be converted into the integer. Okay. So let the number is 6. Let the number is 6. Okay. Uh, here uh, we have to add all the factors. So that's why we have to, uh, taken a variable called sum. The initial value of the sum is 0. Okay. Uh, next let us see the for loop here. If we consider any number. Okay then the maximum factor for that number is that number only. So if you take 6, then the maximum factor is 6. The minimum factor is 1. Okay. So before 6, what is the, what is its previous maximum factor? So 3. So 3 is nothing but 6 by 2. So its previous biggest factor is 6 by 2. That is 3. So likewise, if you consider 28, then the minimum factor is 1. Whereas the maximum factor is 28. So next what is its previous biggest factor? So that is 28 by 2. So 28 by 2 means 14. 14. Okay. 28 by 2 means 14. So likewise if you take 100. Then the biggest factor for the 100 is that number 100 only. Then its previous biggest factor is 100 by 2. That is 50 only. So here in order to determine the factors. We, for i in range of we have to start from 1. Why? Because the minimum factor for any number is 1. And here we have to continue up to n by 2. n by 2. So, but here in Python the problem is division operator will always use floating point number as the result. So that's why we have to convert that floating point number into the integer with the help of the int function. Let us assume that here n value is 6. Uh, 6 by 2 means we will get 3.0 as the result. 6 by 2 means we will get 3.0 as the result. But we need 3 only. So that's why here we use this int function. So int of 3.0 means we will get only 3. Next to 3 plus 1. 3 plus 1 means 4. So here the stop value is 4. We know about the for loop. The for loop will be repeated up to stop minus 1. Here what is the stop value? 3 plus 1. Here the stop value is 4. So 4 minus 1 means 3. So the for loop will be repeated up to 3 only. Up to 3 only. Up to 3 only. Let us take 28. Let us take 28. So the for loop will start from 1. Why? Because the minimum factor is 1. And we have to continue up to 14. Let us see the logic. What is n value? 28. 28 by 2 means we will get 14.0 as the result. But here we need only integer part. So int of 14.0 means 14. So 14 plus 1 means 15. So now the stop value is 15. So the for loop will be repeated up to stop minus 1. 
So 15 minus 1 means 14. So the for loop will be repeated up to 14. Okay. Now let us see the logic. Let n value is 6. Let n value is 6. If n modulo i double is equal to 0, that means we are checking whether it is factor or not. So what is the result of 6 modulo 1? So 1, 6. So 1, 6, 6, 6. So 6 minus 6 means 0. So 1 is a factor. 6, n, 6 modulo i result is 0. So 0 double is equal to 0. Condition is true. So sum is equal to sum plus i. i. What is the initial value of the sum? 0. So 0 plus what is i value? What is i value? 1. So 0 plus 1 means 1. Next i will become 2. Next to 6 modulo 2 double is equal to 0. So 2, 6. So 2, 3 are 6. So 6 minus 6 means 0. So remainder is 0. So we can say that this condition is true. So 2 is also a factor. So we have to add i to the sum. The previous value of the sum is 1. Whereas i value is 2. So 1 plus 2 means 3. Now sum contains 3. Now sum contains 3. So next in the next iteration i will become 3. 6 modulo 3 double is equal to 0. So 3, 6. So 3, 2 are 6. So 6 minus 6 means 0. So condition is true. So we can say that 3 is also a factor. So sum is equal to sum plus i. Previously sum value is 3. I value is 3. So 3 plus 3 means 6. Next the condition will become false. Why? Because the for loop will be repeated up to 3 only. Okay. 6 by 2 means 3. So 3 plus 1 means 4. So 4 means uh, stop value is 4 means the for loop will be repeated up to stop minus 1. 4 minus 1 means 3. So next condition will become false. The control comes out from the for loop. Check the value and check the value of n and sum. The value of n is 6 whereas the value of sum is 6. So both are same. So we can say that the given number is a perfect number. The given number is a perfect number. So let us assume that uh, let the number is 8. Let the number is 8. So what are the factors for 8? So 1, 2, 4, 8. But we should not consider this number. So 4 plus 2 means 6. 6 plus 1 means 7. Here the sum value is 7. Whereas the given number is 8. So we can say that 8 is not a perfect number. Uh, so in this way we can check whether the number is perfect number or not. Now let us see the program execution. So first we have to read a number from the keyboard. The initial value of the sum is 0. Uh, here uh, we have to determine the factors from 1 to half of the number. So int of n by 2 plus 1. Okay. Let the number is 6. So 6 by 2 means 3.0. Why? Because in Python division operator will always gives floating point number as the result. So 6 by 2 means 3.0. So int of 3.0 means 3. So 3 plus 4, 1 means 4. So now the stop value is 4. So the for loop will be repeated up to stop minus 1. So the for loop will be repeated up to 4 minus 1. That is 3. So in the first iteration I value is 1. So 6 modulo 1 double is equal to 0. Condition is true. So 1 is a factor. So sum is equal to sum plus i. So 0 plus 1 means 1. So sum value is 1. In the next iteration I value is 2. 6 modulo 2 double is equal to 0. Condition is true. So 2 will be added to sum. So 1 plus 2 means 3. Now sum value is 3. In the next iteration I value will become 3. 6 modulo 3 double is equal to 0. Condition is true. So sum is equal to sum plus i. 3 plus 3 means 6. Next to condition will become false. So control comes out from the for loop. n value is 6. Sum value is 6. Both are same. So we will get the message as 6 is a perfect number. Let us run the program once. Let the number is 6. So enter a number 6. So 6 is a perfect number. So that is the output. Let us run the program one more time. Let the number is 28. So 28 is also a perfect number. Uh, let us run the program one more time. Let the number is 8. 8 is not a perfect number. Okay. So with this we can conclude that our logic is